I've been thinking about what video to do today. When this actually comes out, I'll be in the middle of moving house. So I want something that I could film ahead of time. Um, and I recently dusted off my MetaQuest and I realized something. This runs Android, so this can run Linux. Yes, today I want to get a Linux environment up and running on my Quest so that I could have a fully functional computer on the Quest itself. Not streaming from another computer, having to be tethered to a machine, none of that kind of stuff. It all running on device. Um, and, you know, okay, maybe it's not going to be the most practical thing in the world, but I think it would be kind of cool and it's an interesting use case. Uh, for a device like this. So for those that aren't aware, uh, MetaQuest is fundamentally running Android. It is Android that's been kind of heavily customized into Horizon OS or whatever it is that Meta is calling it. But under the hood, it's Android. And because of that, it's running a Linux kernel and it has that kind of Linux user space that Android fundamentally under the Androidness of it all has. Also, for those that aren't aware, many years ago, I worked on a project called Linux on Android, um, where we basically built an Android app that walks you through the process of getting a full GNU Linux environment up and running on your Android phones. This was quite common, quite a fun thing to do back in the day. And it could be done uh, with on a rooted device through the power of Chiroot, which basically meant you could set up a separate uh, file system if you like and point the Linux kernel to that and that file system could have an ARM version of Ubuntu or Debian or whatever operating system you wanted and then from there you could even run a virtual desktop and connect through VNC and you'd have a full virtual desktop environment running on your phone. This was a lot of fun and uh, there's been many projects over the years that have done this in many different ways uh, but more recently, through the use of Peroot, which basically means you can use things like Chiroot in uh, the user in, in the user space, you don't have to do it rooted. Uh, you can now actually do this on a non-rooted device. That's kind of running under basically an app user space, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it got me thinking that you know it's something I haven't done in a very long time, and it kind of could be a lot of fun. It could be interesting to see how easy it is to do on the Quest. Um, and also, like I said, I needed a video idea that I could film ahead of time. I also have quite a stinking cold, so apologies. Uh, but uh, enough of that. Let's get into it and let's see if we can get Linux running on this thing. Okay, so we're gonna use a couple of different apps that are Android apps that you can sideload onto the Quest, no problem at all. Uh, and they're just going to simplify things. We don't technically need any apps, uh, but this is just going to make life a lot easier. For the Android side, we're going to use an app called Androidix because uh, my app from many, many years ago is long dead. <laughs> there's, there's no two ways about it. It does not run on modern devices. Um, and this, pro this video is not about resurrecting that. So we're going to use someone else's project here. Um, it's, I've used it before. It seems very good. It's all using the same kind of ideas, the same kind of processes, so that I'm not really surprised at all um, about there being new projects that are still going. So we're gonna use this, and more importantly, the reason why we're gonna use this is that they do release their APKs over on GitHub, so we can use this um, to sideload onto the Quest, because of course there is no Play Store on the Quest, so we can't download from there. So we're gonna use this. We're also gonna use Termux, which is a brilliant terminal emulator application. So we're gonna download that as well. And again, they have their releases readily available on GitHub. So we're gonna make use of this and that's just gonna give us a turn, terminal environment. So we don't really need to set up a Linux GUI. Um, you would be able to access and use any ARM compiled Linux apps just using this. But nonetheless, uh, we will also install a VNC, which is a VNC application client for Android. And that will allow us to connect to the GUI and also, again, is available on GitHub as open source that we can just download and sideload. So those are the things that we're going to use. So on my Quest, I've already enabled um, developer settings, which is much like on an Android phone. It allows you to use ADB and kind of sideload applications. 
Um, and we could just use ADB on the command line to sideload those apps and actually install them. Uh, but I'm just going to use SideQuest here. It's a pretty decent application when it loads. Uh, and um, yeah, it, it works nicely. It gives a quick GUI. Um, and we just need to initialize the headset. So let's do that now. OK, that took a few times, but we are now all set up. And I can take this ridiculous thing off for a second. <laughs> OK, so. There is a pretty simple APK installer here. So if we go into my downloads and we'll just grab the three APKs that we want to install, and we can just pop over here and watch them install. All right, and with all those installed, that's all we need from the computer. So we can now head into VR land. Okay, so we are now recording my quests screen. Um, I don't think I'm going to need the controllers. I should be able to use my hands. Um, and we have also got a keyboard, which I believe we have synced up, and a mouse as well. Yeah, so you can see that we do actually have mouse and keyboard connected via Bluetooth. Uh, again, you wouldn't necessarily need these. You can use your fingers to point at stuff, and you can also um, use the on-screen virtual keyboard if you really wanted to. But just in terms of this being a bit of an easier experience, uh, we can come into here um, and I guess as well just do this so you can see. So essentially for developer, you go into advanced and you scroll down and then there's developer settings. And you're going to want to enable developer settings, which allows sending and installing APK files. So from here, we can go into unknown sources and all our applications have installed. So let's, uh, yeah, there we go. So we can basically load up Android Nix and it gives us this kind of standard view that a normal portrait Android app looks like when it is loaded up here. Um, we can try and get rid of that. Um, it says there's an update, but uh, we're not using the closed door, so tough. Um, and then it gives you a couple of options. They have modded operating systems, which are kind of a paid for feature. So we're just gonna use a standard OS here. Um, and again, we have some options to choose from. We can use Ubuntu, we can use Debian, we can use Kale Linux, Void, Fedora. These are a little dated in terms of their kind of versions, but I mean, for this pro for this video, that's fine. And you could update them anyway. So we're going to use Ubuntu 22.4 here. We can set up uh, different things. For example, we're going to have a desktop environment and we're going to use XFFCE. Excellent. So it's now kind of copied a command to our uh, clipboard. Um, so if we open Tamux, which again gives you a handy shortcut to do that, and we're nicely into this landscape view, which I much prefer, um, you can actually still see Android Nix over here. So you've got these multi panels, which is quite nice. Um, and it was also brought up the virtual keyboard, which we could use. I'm not going to though, because why use a virtual keyboard when you have the real thing? Uh, so we should be able to copy in the command that it gave us, which is this command here. So it's actually kind of a chain of commands. We're going to update our packages. We're going to install a couple of packages in Termux, and then we're going to download this script and run the script. And that's actually going to then set up the whole Linux environment and everything that we want. Now, so we're going to do that, um, and it's going to go through and set Termux up. So, uh, yep, we can. go through all this and it's going to, uh, there you go, see it's setting up and installing Ubuntu and Debian repositories and all that sort of fun stuff. It's going through, la 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 la. So it's going to take a minute. And again, this is all running on device. I do have a cable, but that's just because I'm plugged in for charging because um, I don't trust the battery life on this thing. <laughs> but nonetheless, it is setting up everything to get our Ubuntu environment up and running. And now we're here uh, to set up the BNC server. So we can uh, we can click on this and we can enter a password that we're going to use for that. Um, and then we can also set up kind of a, a resolution that we want BNC to run at. We'll do QHD, why not? Um, and then as you can see, it is up and running. Um, and that that is that. <laughs> it, it now we now have a a Linux environment um, set up. We have this full thing. So I mean, we can do things like uh, check 
the uh, storage, but as you can see, we've just got this one mounted storage file system, and that's kind of the virtual file system that's been set up. Uh, but we can we can do, you know, we can do Linuxy things here. Um, we can also, I think, install stuff via Appet. So like, um, is Neo Fetch available? Yeah, so we can install Neo Fetch. And then we can run an obligatory Neo fetch on our quest. <laughs> and here you go, you can see that our RAM usage, you can see our CPU, is six core CPU, uh, the resolution of the uh, virtual environment that we have set up. This is everything here. It is pretty cool. The uptime is a little funky. That's a bit weird. Definitely not been on that long, but whatever. Uh, let's now try and connect to that VNC. So obviously, if you're a command line Linux user, this is all you need, job done. You have a nice little environment to work in, uh, but perhaps you do actually want to have access to that GUI. So we can we should be able to use AVNC here. Uh, we should be able to set it up to connect. I'm pretty sure it was running on that port and so we should be able to do that. And there we go. Okay, so we actually do now have the environment. It's a little bit funky. Can we uh, can we maybe change some? Oh, can we change some settings? I'm gonna have a look and see if we can find a better VNC application here because this is obviously not optimized for the quest in the slightest. Um, it doesn't look great. Okay, well after a little bit of playing about. I still can't quite get a web browser to actually install. Snap packages don't seem to be working. Uh, it's all the joys of a Linux environment. However, I did manage to install LibreOffice, which is pretty cool in its own right. Um, and realistically, you're not gonna wanna use super heavy GUI applications anyway, because there isn't any uh, hardware acceleration here for the UI stuff. So yeah, something basic like an image writer, you definitely can do it in the GUI and it works, it works, but realistically, you're probably gonna wanna use the command line to do any real work, um, which in itself is obviously very, very cool. So yeah, I think <laughs> having said that, there we go. We have Linux running on the MetaQuest. And there we have it, slightly silly video for today, maybe not the biggest use cases, but it's still very cool, at least to me, to be able to run a full Linux environment on something like the MetaQuest, where you can actually then do computery things using that compute power. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video and all the links will be down below for all the apps and stuff that I used so that you can follow along. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.